Hey guys, it's Danny, and today I'm going to be reviewing the iPhone XR in 2021. I'm going to be seeing how good this thing um, compares to iPhone 13 in regards to the specs, and I'm giving my opinion on uh, how good this thing is in 2021. And if you have one, should you upgrade, should you keep it? And we're going to find out in today's video. So without further ado, let's get right into the new iPhone XR 2021 review. Let's start off with the display, since this thing got bashed by the media in, t in 2018 because of its mediocre 720p display, where other phones had 1440p displays, including iPhone, I Apple's XS Max and XS, and uh, that had high refresh rates. So, first off, 720p is really, it's it's not the best, So and that means it's less than 10, that's full HD. It's still is HD, but it's not the best um, type of high definition quality available. And to be honest, this phone is, for a far, you can't really tell the difference. But you start to pixel peep and you can start getting really close. You can definitely see that the camera and like not the camera, but like the display, the text isn't as sharp and as crisp as it is on let's say a 1440p iPad, like my iPad or like my iPad Air 3 over here. It doesn't really um it's still you can for for it's kind of hard to tell the difference, but when you're really close up like this, you can definitely see um that it's not it's not really the greatest um 1440p display. It is still 1080p, I mean 720p, 326 pixels per inch. It would have been really cool if, it, if they had at least 340, 350. That would have made it a little bit more sharp, but it still isn't really that good. At least they should have put a 1080p display on it. It's just kind of sad, but it's not the it's not the um it's not the end of the world. But still, it it still is, isn't really that good on an iPhone for, for 750 bucks. Um, the new the new iPhones um the, the new iPhone 13 they come with 1080p displays minimum, and 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 they start at 699, 50 dollars cheaper. That that this phone started with the price with, and also it's 60 hertz display. And some of this, and so Apple makes some of the smoothest 60 hertz displays out there, and it does feel really smooth, but it still isn't as fast and responsive as the new iPhone 13 Pros or the iPhone 13s. Um, so it's actually pretty good, but still, if you're comparing it to like an iPhone 13 or a Pro, it, this thing won't really stand, stand that big of a battle with the, with, the, or with the refresh rate. But overall, still, it's actually pretty good. 60 hertz is still, it's not the end of the world, unless you have seen 120 hertz, it's kind of hard to go back to 60 hertz. It just doesn't feel that good. If you have 120 hertz, it's kind of a pain using it with 60 hertz, but it's fine. And it's not the big, it's not the end of the world. Um, we still can't, um, if, since it's 720p, you can't really watch full 4K or 1080p videos on it. It's still got 720p the entire time, but it's actually pretty good for watching 4K. I can't tell the difference between this one though, this iPhone, and my iPad Air 3 watching 4K videos. It's that one seems just a tad bit sharper, while this one just seems a little bit soft and kind of grainy sometimes. So that's just kind of it. Also, I have a little complaints. One is a notch, so I kind of don't like it, but I can see it's kind of iconic, I guess. It's, it's kind of Apple's way of separating themselves from the market. So it's kind of annoying. Number two is that the bezels are a little bit too big, way too big, in fact, because the iPhone XS Max, um, the, um, the, um, the better iPhone, and the iPhone 12s and 13s have a thinner bezels. And this one isn't really, it's just a little bit you can see the bezels, especially in this black colorway. You can't really tell where, like, where, like, the phone, or like the bands, or like, you know, the um side of the phone it begins and where the bezels end. So it's kind of annoying. So when you're watching videos or just gaming or doing whatever, whatever you're doing, the notch will get in the way. It'll cut, it'll cut off some part of your content. It's kind of annoying. And then these bezels will also cut off some part, and they're kind of big and kind of annoying. Um, they're still, they're still pretty big. And with that in, the notch looks absolutely enormous on this. Still kind of annoying. But it's not really the result. It's people have gotten used to the notch, and since the, not the iPhone has had a notch for about the last four years, people are still buying it. So, not the end of the world, but it's just not ideal. Now, let's go on with the performance. Where this thing is pretty good in 2021 for the performance. This is a brand new iPhone tonight from T-Mobile. We've got it. Um, my dad got it for his work, and I can say it is really good. And see, having an A12 Bionic chip, I have already seen what the A12 can do on my iPad Air. With with recording, with um with, with gaming and other stuff like that, and just editing videos, this thing is really good. Um, it, it doesn't really live up to A15 Bionic standards because of course A15 is faster, it's newer, it's three generations ahead. Um, but for this thing, for this for three ninety nine dollars or even four ninety nine, wherever you find it, this thing is a is a very good um it's a very good iPhone for the for the performance. It still lags behind the thirteen and the twelve, but it's not it's not really that big of a difference. Also, if you're looking, you're ordering between this and an SE, I'll be making a video upcoming um, versus the iPhone XR versus the SE coming very soon. But um, for this, for this, this iPhone is now three ninety nine on eBay for sixty four gigabytes. And if, you, if you're looking into an iPhone SE that has um, um, three ninety nine, also here is the difference. It has a notch. It has and the XR has a notch, a, a better Face ID system, and overall just a cleaner, modern design. While the SE is smaller has those big chunky bezels and isn't really the best iPhone. It has a faster chip, 
and the cameras are about the same. So that's about it, the differences between the IXR and the SE, in case you were wondering. But I will be going more in detail into that in, some, in, in, a, in a video I'm doing in, in the upcoming days. But overall, the performance is just overall pretty good, pretty good, just decent enough for gaming and other stuff like that, high tasks that you might need to do. Now on to the battery life, where this thing really pops up on the map. So this this with this this iPhone has a hefty 2,912 mAh battery. It would have been better if this was made 3,000, because then the battery life would have been insane. But it still is pretty good. I woke up, I, I charged this phone overnight 200%, um, and then I woke up and I started using it, watching videos, recording, I'm um, doing uh, videos over there with my pets, some YouTube shorts, and other stuff like that. And at the end of the day, uh, with about three hours and a half spent on time, and about four, and my dad was also using it too, and my mom for playing some music. Um, I know that uh, we end, my family ended the day with this phone with about 25, 30 ish percent, which is actually a pretty good, that's actually pretty good. You have a little bit of extra left, which is actually always, oh, the best, um, a good a good phone battery is, is when you end, we have a day about five hours spent on time, and you have 20% or 30% left. That's when you know the battery life is really good. And that's where this phone pops on the map. It's really good. It even have a better battery life than the iPhone XS and the XS Max. Um, so that is actually pretty good. Um, and this has haptic touch, not three touch that the, that the iPhone XS Max had. Haptic touch, haptic touch is already. Uh, I'm already used to it. I know how it feels. Um, so yes, I know how it feels. But overall, the haptics on this phone is a great haptic motor. It's really nice. Everything when, you, when you're lifting up, swiping, I'm um, doing gestures, typing. It's just really good. Um, having this haptic motor, it's really excellent. So the battery life is really good. Also, uh, watching videos, you can probably kill it in a day if you really tried hard. But for most people, it's not gonna happen. This is a, a, even a two-day phone if you use it very lightly. But yeah, this is obviously a two-day phone, one-day phone for those people who use it all the time. Two days for those people who use it just sometimes. Right before we get into the cameras, let's talk about Face ID. Face ID was introduced with the iPhone 10, one generation behind this, and it was a revolutionary new um, biometric design that could unlock your face, that, that you can unlock your phone with your face just like this, and boom, it really fast and easy. Um, back then it was it was kind of slow. It took a time to recognize your face, but now it's just really easy. Just recognizing your face like this. Boom! There you go. It picks it up and there you go. And sometimes I like this cool animation when it says it doesn't work, like like this. And then you have to like go like this. And this animation here, it like swivels around and it just like this is cool animation. It's it's pretty cool. I like that animation. Basically now is way better on iOS 15. Way better, just so much faster. You still gotta do that little lean action though. We have your phone on the table like this. You're typing. You still gotta lean, and then it it when, it, when this distance doesn't really recognize your face, you have to like get a little space from it, and then you have it, and then there you go. It recognizes you. So gotta do that lean action though. But if you're standing, it's gonna be way easier. But if, you, if your face like this, it will still recognize it. But if you're on top of it, it won't really recognize it. And what Face ID does is you have the sensors in it. You, it uh, fires dot projectors from 3D. And it'll recognize your face, and it'll even recognize it if, you're, if your face um, changes, like you get a haircut, it focuses on your face, your face gestures, and all that stuff. So, Face ID is really good, much into uh, much more into the future than Touch ID was, but Touch ID is still really good, so if you, if you have like an iPhone 8 or stuff like that. This phone is still really good on Face ID, it works really well on iOS 15, works every time, really good. It, the only thing I have a complaint against this is that if you can unlock Face ID, you can unlock, you can unlock your iPhone when you have a mask on. It's kind of annoying. You can unlock your, your phone with an Apple Watch, but it's not the same experience. Kind of annoying, but just a little complaint there. Hopefully, Apple can make this better with the iPhone 14 or in a software update that they just allow you to use your face mask, your face mask and still use Face ID. Because when, when you're in the train or you're in the bus, whatever, you have to take off your mask and it won't recognize you. Otherwise, it just won't. Kind of annoying, but it's still a pretty good feature. Now, let's get on to the cameras. And now for the cameras. It is a good camera system, not ideal with this um, okay large sensor, 12 megapixel sensor. It's kind of sad, but it has an f1.8 aperture, um, which means you can add more light. Um, this camera system, it is okay. It does deliver some pretty good shots, um, but overall, it's just kind of it's not it's not competing anything with iPhone 13s or the 12s. It's uh, just like amazing cameras that have bigger sensors and stuff like that. It has an f1.8 aperture, which which means you have more light gathering. And professional cameras, the the aperture means how much um background blur you want. Um, this is still this is still the case with with iPhones or any any phone in fact that has portrait mode, which means it can blur out the background. But overall, if you're talking about a sensor, it means how much light it can gather. So this has an f1.0 aperture, which is the probably the best out there. F1.6 is even better because it, it can gather more pixels and more light. 
as so for dark for dark shot environments. So that is pretty good. Um, which means it can get just more light, basically. It is just that's all that is for the F aperture. As for the quality, this this iPhone delivers pretty typical iPhone quality shots. Just nice dynamic detail, smart HDR, just beautiful shots in daylight, and sometimes with um difficult situations like different types of green, kind of it kind of gets like a little bit more brightens up some types of green than others. Light green it brightens up a little bit too much, which looks actually like HDR, which actually is pretty cool. You got some nice contrast, a good, a good photo shot, a good photos, and overall just great sharpness and detail. And as for video, this iPhone video is just on top of every other phone out there. iPhone video is just one of the best. It's just we get, is this I'm recording from an iPhone SE. It's way better. It's just like it just gets more pixel clarity and just overall feels better. Here is a sample of the iPhone XR's video. Just so gonna be iPhone video footage from the iPhone XR. So you can see that I'm walking by myself. Civilization mode. You can see your colors do really pop. Especially this one over here. Colors really pop. We have a little pool. We have floor. Some things over here. We have this chair. We have my microphone over here. Pretty windy, so we're walking towards one right now. I want to stand. That's my mic. I use that like that. The tripod. I'm um, iPhone stand over here. Is your colors do really do pop over there? Some odd focus over there. My sister. Um, over here we have this. You can see here. Wind is in pretty good mic text. So overall, it's actually pretty good footage. I love it. Nice and sharp, I guess. As you saw there, this iPhone does a great job with the mics and with overall just using the camera and just overall really good. I'm focusing on my pet, this is the other, and just a really good job. Um, this iPhone does an excellent job also as slow motion. Still, slow motion has kind of died down now. It's still a pretty cool feature to use, but isn't, it's just not that good. You can do HD 240 frames per second, that will eat about, about 400 megabytes of one, of like one minute of slow-mo. So, or about like one gigabyte or so. So it's still pretty good to use only on rare occasions. But overall, the cameras are really good. The photos on the night turn out pretty good. Um, it says they have a dedicated night mode, so it does suffer from that a little bit. Um, but it's just overall a pretty good camera. You can have it on um, recording as long as you want until the storage either this phone dies or the storage runs out. So overall, this phone does an excellent job on that. And this thing this is actually pretty good overall, just a nice camera system. Just really good at doing anything and almost everything just pretty good for the cameras even though it's just one camera doesn't have like a teleport or ultra wide it's actually pretty good um personally it's really good selfies are also really great seven microphone front facing camera and you also have an emojis um so you can flex on your friends so you have an iphone that supports an emojis but that's about it for the cameras a solid a just really good portrait mode also does a really good job it's not the best but hey it works pretty good on it now for the conclusion that you all been waiting for Overall, this is a solid B plus phone from Apple. It is just really good. If you have the money, definitely buy it. It's cheap. It's it still is pretty good. You have Face ID. You get this pretty futuristic look. And it is overall pretty good. Right? Like the size, it feels kind of actually kind of small. Um, so you can see it's six point it's like six point one inches, but it's actually just kind of small. I can easily reach all four corners, so it's pretty small. You got you got adjust overall like this, but it's actually pretty easy to do. It's actually pretty small. Oh, it's really great. On eBay, you can find it for $3.99 even less. Depends on how good the, use, the durability is or like how good the metal shaft is. Um, go for like a space gray color, like a white color because it looks super dope. This is really low key. As you can see, I like dark and like, you know, matte more, like a little bit matte um, objects. It looks pretty good. For $4.99 or $4.70 or $4.50, you can get the 120 gigabyte model, which we got, but from T-Mobile. And then it, um, by, the, by the iPhone SE, it has about the same exact price. Um, for like the exact same, almost exact same specs with A13, and it, and about the same exact exact cameras. I'm gonna be making a video comparing the iPhone 10R versus the iPhone 3, um, iPhone SE at some in, in about a few days. If you're wondering if you should upgrade to iPhone 13 if, on the iPhone 10R, it depends all about you. If you have the money, overall, I'll say to upgrade if you if you have the money. But if not, just keep it for another year. It's gonna be really good, and it's just and it's still it's a pretty good camera system. You can't complain about that. It still is overall pretty good. The haptics are good. The cameras are good. The speed, the chip is good. So overall, if you're looking for a new iPhone from like an eight, definitely upgrade to this. If you can upgrade to the 13, but overall, this phone is a solid um, iPhone. Um, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching my video. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video.